What's going on, CBO Nation? This is Armani DePaul from CBO TV. And welcome to this interview here from the Fort Lauderdale Cobras, two of the coaches, Roy Nino and Antonio Aponte. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing on this Wednesday night? Good. Good. How are you? Money. Doing good. I can't complain. And, you know, the season is coming up. We're just about a couple of weeks away. I believe it's actually about a week away before the season opener, actually, for the Charles Johnson Baseball Summer League. So a lot of anticipation. Obviously, this league brings a lot of exposure for, you know, for kids and students trying to get into baseball, giving them opportunities. So we're going to talk about your guys' teams, the Fort Lauderdale Cobras, how your season went last year, and what to expect for this year from the Fort Lauderdale Cobras. So you guys ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So let's kick off with the last season. So you guys were the number two seed last year. You had a 12-9 and nine regular season record. Just Talk about how your regular season went, you know, the highs, the lows, you know, as you guys were getting ready to move into the postseason last year. I came out hot, um, just like any other summer ball team. Uh, midway through the season, uh, we kind of hit our, like, a little dry spell and bounced back Then had a couple guys, you know, for whatever reason, could not make certain games. But um, for the most part, the boys being the first time playing together, I think they held their own. They did pretty good. You know, I had no complaints. Everybody came and fought and did their job. Um, it was tough for them uh, from situations where, you know, some other players playing different positions and, you know, just that summer ball grind. But in all in all, I, I couldn't say more for my boys. My boys were awesome. Um, it was fun. And, you know, looking forward again this year. Antonio, last year was your first year, obviously, with the Charles Johnson Summer League. So talk us through that, you know, joining this league for your really your inaugural season with them. So talk about that, you know, what it was like joining, being new and just getting accustomed to this new environment. Yeah, like Coach Nino said, it was a lot of fun, first and foremost. Um, and I was proud of the guys and how we performed last year. Um as a new coach, uh, I was really nervous as to how the the team would respond to such a young coach in the dugout. And the guys welcomed me just as much as we welcomed them. And I think it was a big part of our success. And I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to year two. And hopefully hopefully we get back to the the same position that we were in last year and we capitalize on our championship this year that we weren't able to do last year. So now let's move on to the postseason. And like I mentioned, you guys came in as the number two seed. And, Tony, you and I talked before we went on air and how you mentioned how you guys hit a walk-up to advance to the semifinals. So, Coach Nino, we'll start off with you and then we'll move on to Antonio. Talk us through that that walk-off to advance to the semifinals and how that must have brought such confidence to the team. Oh, man. That's exactly what it brought, brought the confidence. Um, I mean, because it was going back and forth. Uh, that's why I love that game, truth be told. Um, I know one play doesn't kind of determine the game, but we gave up a lot of errors that game. And in my eyes, I mean, like I said, if you ask me, I don't think we should have won. But the way them boys fought, the way them boys fought, and how it happened, and how it, like I said, I love this game for what it is. And the baseball gods blessed us on that one. Um, like I said, the boys fall, but man, that's all it was. And we got we got the ball to roll our way when it counted. And hats off to the other team. You know, they stuck around and fought. I think I believe I think we had a score like maybe five or seven runs in two innings or something like that. It was it was kind of crazy. But like I said, the boys fought and hats off to them. Uh, they did not stop fighting. So like that's one thing about that team, man. Last year. Some boys came and they showed up, whether uh, win or loss, they were always kind of fighting. And that's what kind of like played out our season. And to be honest with you, just for us to be there was kind of like almost like, I guess I wouldn't say a surprise or a shocker, but um, that's what it was. Boys fighting, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we fought to the very end that game. 
and uh, I was at first coaching. Uh, Coach Nino was at third. Um, and you can ask Nino. I, I just, for some reason, we had Mikey Bell at the plate, and I just had a feeling that he was going to do something great like he did all year. Mike was a, a great ball player at Montreat College, and uh, it was a, it was a lot of fun to be. A, it was it was it was fun all year, but that was um that moment was uh, definitely something I'll remember for a long time, and um, you know it was a good game, good game to remember. Definitely, it's on CBO TV's uh, YouTube page. If you guys ever want to go back and watch it, it was a lot of fun. He was hot all summer for us. Mikey Bell, he was probably one of our better hitters. Uh, that summer so it, it didn't really surprise me just how it unfolded i knew if we got to him yeah like it, it was golden and but, we were down to our i think we were down to our last out too it was just it was crazy as long as we got to him i was kind of but it was shaky again to him how it <laughs> happened i think we might had a couple of errors to get the bases on a couple of while like i said the baseball gods blessed us that's what it was um again the boys fought but hats off to all of them so you guys advanced to the championship game last year. Unfortunately, you weren't able to seal the deal in the championship. But, I mean, the fact that you guys were even able to make it to the dance, have a shot at that championship, how did that feel knowing that you guys were able to make it to the top and while, yes, you weren't able to win the championship, just knowing that you had the opportunity, knowing that you were in the finals? Well, I can't say we should have won the game because losers say that. Losers say we should have won the game. You know what I mean? Uh, did we have a good opportunity to win it? Absolutely. We just, you know, again, um, lack of communication. Pitchers, the catcher, um, guys not playing together, a couple of signs being, you know, misunderstood or misread for whatever the case may be. Um, again, a lot of stuff didn't roll our ways, but our boys fought. And it was, it was, it, I was proud of him. I was proud of him, like I said, because we hit like a little dry spot. We came out the gate hot. Um, everybody was he he heading for us. Like the first 13, 14 games of the summer, we were like almost like lights out. So every time we played somebody, we were getting their best. Uh, I think maybe a week before that, I think the bums beat us in like, I don't know, extra innings. And, you know, they took it like something serious. And a lot of teams did. So, at the end of the day, um, man, it just – it was something that didn't roll our way. But uh, if you ask me, I know it's biased. We, we run that game three times, we win it. Yeah. Um, the first thing I want to say is uh, about that game is um, it's pretty obvious uh, listening to, you know, Coach and I that it still resonates in our head, which is a good thing. Um and I think that's going to help set the precedent for this year with our new team coming in, that the goal is to win the championship this year. So going back to that game, um, you know, the Beach Bums were the previous champion in 20, excuse me, 21. And they were looking to go back to back and they <clears throat> they sealed the deal. They've been in that position before and they knew what to do to execute and, and get the win. And uh, we just didn't do that. And some of that falls on us. And that's okay. It's just part of the game. Um, so yeah, like coach said, a couple things didn't roll our way. If the uh, if that ha if a couple things roll our way, the outcome might have changed. Um, but I was really happy that um, in our first year as a coaching staff and as a first year as our team, you know, we were able to go so far. And uh, you can only you can only take what you can from that and move on, or continue to look at it as a negative and not move on. And so. I'm happy for the experience. I'm happy the guys got to experience such a, a high pressure situation game. And uh, I'm just ready to move forward this year. And we're really excited with the team we got, hopefully to rewrite history and win it this year. So let's talk about this upcoming season. Um, you guys have a couple new pickups. You have Jason Moss, a uh, commit from Nova Southeastern University. He's an outfielder. Um, Tony, you and I talked about this uh, before we went on our air. You got Yosani Marcez um, from a new pitcher coming in for the team as well. And you also mentioned Angel Ibor from uh, Rosemont College. So 
with these new additions, and of course you have your starting pitcher, Jojo Man, coming back as well with these new acquisitions to the team. What do you think with these new acquisitions? Um, how are they going to help mesh and gel with the team to help improve and, you know, possibly even get back to the finals? Yeah, wow. so – sorry, go ahead, Coach. No, yeah, that's – that's an interesting question. The whole thing about it is like uh, we got to have to mesh and all. Um, there's not a lot of returners, but um, there's always competitive guys that come out. I'm looking at the roster right now. Um, we got a few guys that are coming back. So it should be interesting. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to see what um, what these boys are ready to put out. You know what I mean? So um, they got a jersey on their back, so they're playing for a reason. I don't, I don't care where you're playing. As long as you're playing – somewhere in the United States or even in the world and you're playing college baseball, that's a blessing. And there's a reason why you have that. I know, I know kids that go to junior college and get drafted the next year. So um, I'm, I, I can't really respond to that. I'm looking at the roster and we got maybe two guys tops or even one that I see coming back. So I'm excited to see what, what, what the turn I might be. So um, that's a good question. That's like a to be continuing one for me. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a new it's a new face, new faces for the program. Um, like I said, we have JoJo Man coming back. He was our workhorse last year. Uh, did great on the mound for us. Had a couple of complete games for us. Um, really never shied away from the ball when we gave it to him. Always wanted to be in the position to pitch for our team. So we're excited. We're excited to bring him back. And um, and we have a lot of new guys on the roster. I think we have a lot of talent on the roster. And on paper, it looks like we have a winning team. So we're excited about that. And we're excited to share with them, you know, the culture that, that Coach and I are going to bring to the team. It's show up, blow up on the first day. And uh, we're really excited. We're really excited. What are you guys looking forward to the most going into this new season? Are you guys looking forward to the most just the new fresh faces coming to the organization or, you know, knowing that you guys lost the championship and, you know, you could say maybe that's a chip on your guys' shoulder and you that's giving you guys more motivation to bounce back and take home the hardware at the end of the season? No, nah, uh, that's always a plus. And I, I would say that'd be like, I guess, cliche to say not. That's our common goal. You know, that's the beauty of us. Um, guys from all over the state, United States of America or even out of the country coming to play for one common goal. But my whole – my whole thing about summer ball and I've coached other summer leagues, man, and just kind of getting that brotherhood. You get this brotherhood, you're playing X, like uh, something like, was it 30, 40 games in like 38 days. It's a grind to be out there. Um, it's hot. The weather's saying don't do extra curricular activities. And we're out there running two games and the way we have it, I have my boys out there two hours before game time. So we're probably like 10 hours a day at a field. Um, I just like to instill that, like that family chemistry and that bond with them, man. So I hope they can like take something away from that summer and, and, you know, like make a friend or, you know, a couple friends and, you know, maybe down the years that go by, they can invite them to the wedding or something like that. But my whole thing about it is a, to make them better but B, I always respect the game and the game will respect you. So I wanted to instill that um, respect to get you places money can't, you know what I mean? So a lot of these guys come in thinking that, you know, the game is a certain way. And i tell you what, I, I don't, to this day, I'm learning even more every day. So I just wanted to instill these boys that you respect the game with high respect and, and it, it, it'll give you a lot back in a good way. So back to that question is that brotherhood. That brotherhood is powerful, man. That that's what I like to instill with my boys and somewhat of a family. At, at Lynn, I have my guys saying bike chain. You know, one chain falls off, you can't ride a bike. So our boys this year, you know, we had a rough year at Lynn, but our whole thing was family bike chain. So that's a kind of mentality and dogs. We're all dogs, and I want that to instill that in my boys in the summer. You know what I mean? We ride together, we fall together. But, you know, show up, blow up, like Coach said, and just be dogs, man. Be dogs since the day you get up. As soon as your feet hit that ground, make sure you're dogs. Because at the end of the day, there's someone coming for your spot or someone to come for that chip that we're talking about. So I go back to, again, that brotherhood, man. That brotherhood overrides a lot of things. 
Yeah, for me, um, what I'm looking, you know, most forward to as a coach uh, is is probably having the opportunity to, you know, change some guys' lives. Um, for the guys who aren't committed, hopefully, you know, change their life and find them a spot to play ball. Uh, for the guys who are playing ball at a school, you know, hopefully give them some sort of advice or, you know, benefit them in some way that they become better baseball players and, like Coach said, better men. Uh, so that's that's what I'm looking most forward to as a coach. And as a team, uh, our goals is always going to be the same. It's, it's to win the championship at the end of the year. Well, that's good stuff. I appreciate you guys for taking time out of your day to – have this little conversation, this little interview with us. Um, thank you guys so much for for coming on for this interview. Thank Absolutely. you. Man. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys so much. So that is an interview with coaches for the Fort Lauderdale Cobras, Roy Nino and Antonio Aponte. You could catch them for this year for the Charles Johnson Summer League starting off next Friday. And they're going to go at it for another shot at the finals. And good luck to you guys to try to bring the hardware home. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my man. This this is Armani DePaul from CBO TV, and we'll see you in the next one.